Welcome to the first episode of Deconstructing CDK Patterns. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Destin Lambda. And as a pattern, this uses SNS, Lambda, Lambda Destinations, EventBridge, and API Gateway. The main takeaways you should get from this are how to set up Lambda Destinations, how to invoke them, and how to set up EventBridge rules to integrate with your Lambda destinations. You'll also see the real CDK implementation of this, so you might take away some learnings from that. So what are Lambda destinations? Well, they were introduced at the end of November, just before reInvent, and basically these are a way of configuring for asynchronously invoked Lambdas, a success and a failure target without you having to write any code for that inside the Lambda. So you can just say, if this Lambda executes successfully, I want the output to go here. But if it fails, I want the output to go here. So that that is pretty cool. But as I mentioned, it's asynchronous. So this is the latest Amazon diagram that I could find showing the list of services that can integrate with it and the list of services that it can then call. So you can see on the left, we only have SNS, S3, SES, CloudFormation, CloudWatch Logs, EventBridge, CodeCommit, and Config are the only things that can directly invoke a Lambda with destinations configured. That means that if you developed this Lambda in the console and hit test, it would not trigger the destinations. So it's, it's one of those things you just need to know. And then in the middle, you can see that in terms of configuring destinations, it's just a case of setting the on success and the on failure property and the destination arm that they're going to. From the four available options on the right in this pattern, I chose EventBridge. And that is because it is the most complicated, but also the most powerful of the four, because you can write rules filtering events to go particular places. And it just seemed like if you can master EventBridge, the other three should be pretty simple. Okay, so this is the Destin Lambda pattern. It is an API gateway that triggers SNS, which is our asynchronous invocation method. And that triggers a Lambda, which has destinations configured, both on success and on failure, are triggering event bridge. And then depending on the payload sent in the event bridge, it's triggering either a success Lambda or a failure Lambda. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the async invocation method here is API Gateway directly integrated with SNS via Apache VTL. Now that is quite complicated, but this is a learning pattern. So what I really want to focus on is from the destined Lambda, right? Everything in the blue box is really just there to help you trigger that Lambda in a way that's pretty simple. So the first thing to show with this is to trigger these two modes. It's just a case of hitting an endpoint on the API gateway. And if you hit the slash send event endpoint and pass in a mode of fail, what happens is that query parameter gets transformed and passed into SNS as a message of please fail. And when the destined Lambda sees please fail, it throws an error, which gets put on event bridge and sent to the failure Lambda. Now on the flip side, if you don't send a query param, what happens is it just sends the word please into the destined Lambda, of which it ignores and sends an unsuccess event in the event bridge, which goes to the success Lambda. Um, the reason why I have the word please in there is because you can't send an empty message. So I had to put something, so I thought I'd make it polite. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk through the code because that's, that's the theory. You know that we have an API gateway that triggers an SNS message to be sent to a Lambda that has Lambda destinations configured, which filters either success or failure. For anyone who hasn't seen it before, this is Cloud9. And I'm gonna use this now to run the command you saw on the previous slides to clone the repo. So I can just do npx cdkp init the destined Lambda. And this is just a really quick command line utility I pulled together that does a shallow clone of the GitHub repo. 
And the reason for that is because the GitHub repo has every pattern in both TypeScript and Python, whereas this just pulls down the TypeScript version of the one pattern I want and then runs the npm install to pull down all the dependencies so that it takes a lot of the, the jumping around different folder structures out of the equation. So now that that has pulled that down and installed the dependencies, you can see, first of all, in the top left, that I now have a desktop Lambda folder, and this has the CDK project. I'm going to kick off a deploy, and then I'm going to start running through the project. So you can just go CD into the folder, and then do npm run deploy. And this is a custom task that I have added, which basically just, usually it asks you, this is the list of things that you're deploying. Would you like to proceed? Whereas this task is just, I'm deploying. You've asked me to deploy. Jumping into the code base then, uh, like all node packages, this starts in package.json, where you can see that depending on what AWS components you're going to use, they're defined in your dependencies. And I have chosen to lock all of the versions of all the dependencies in CDK patterns. By default, it will come in with the caret character on them. So instead of just being 1.31.0, it would have that in it. Now, what that would mean is that whenever 1.32.0 is released, that this would automatically upgrade the next time you went to deploy. But if a break and change was introduced, then your pipeline would fail and you would have to fix it you know, before you could deploy again. Whereas if you keep your versions locked, then that means that you can upgrade as you want and your pipelines will always be reliable. So just a personal choice, I, I find it helps. The next thing if, is that this bin section defines the starting point for our CDK app. So inside bin, you find the destin lambda.ts. And this is where in CDK, we define all our stacks. And this one just has a single stack, but you can have multiple and they can depend on each other. Think of a stack like a CloudFormation template. They can all deploy independently. And in CDK, if you have three or four stacks in the same project and you only change one of them, it knows and only deploys that one. So stacks are pretty powerful, but in this example, we only have one. And you can see that it's inside the lib folder. So just jumping in there. This is where the vast majority of the logic for this pattern exists. I'll minimize this deploy while, while doing it. So th this one stack, it's one cloud formation template and every resource is in here. I have started by creating a custom event bus for this inside EventBridge. You don't have to, you could use the default event bus. I just think it's a good habit to start getting into to think, okay, this is a bounded context. Should this bounded context have its own inner event bridge? as well as should there be a larger one out there that you can hook into, that's for you to decide. But it's only three lines of code, so why not? The next section is setting up an SNS topic, which we discussed. It's how we can asynchronously invoke our Lambda. Now we have our destined Lambda itself. And this is just a Lambda function that's node 12. Now if you haven't seen this syntax before, this means it's in the Lambdas folder and it's a file called destin lambda and it's a method inside it called handler so i'll open the lambda in a second but i just want to talk through the next three parameters i set retry attempts to zero because there's a fail part of this pattern so it retries i think twice by default and i didn't want you to have to wait until it exhausted retry attempts so set it to zero just says if it fails trigger the on failure flow and then the next two lines these are the two Lambda destination lines in this pattern. On success, we want to use an event bridge destination and we want to use the custom bus we defined at the top. So we're not using the default bus, we're using ours. Now to jump in, I'm going to jump into the Lambda now and show you, but the important thing to note here is there is zero logic for event bridge in here. This is a standard JavaScript handler that just either returns a JSON object or throws an error. So you can see that it just logs out the event that it receives from SNS so that you can see it in CloudWatch. Then SNS sends the message as an array. So it loops over 
And if the message that comes through, as we discussed earlier, is please fail, it throws an error of type test. Otherwise, it returns a JSON object, and this will become important later on. A JSON object with three parameters. One is source, one is action, and the third one is message. I add, technically, source and action shouldn't be needed, but I added them so that we can filter on the event bridge rules slightly later on. So just note that down. Um, now we just add our uh, Destin Lambda as a subscriber to our SNS topic, and it's one line in CDK. Before moving on to our event bridge rules, the success and failure lambdas are both identical. So they're just here in this lambdas folder as failure.ts and success.ts. And all they do is log out the event they receive so that you can look at it in CloudWatch. But they are both identical functions. So there's nothing, there's nothing special in this definition. It's just saying use the success one. The, the thing to look at with the success and failure lambdas are the, the rules for EventBridge. So this success rule, as you I mentioned, the source and action would become important later. I'm using it in the EventBridge rule to say only pick up events that have this source and this action in the payload and only pick up events that are a success. That means that you can send as many events as you want into this bus unless they're of this type they will not go they will not be they will not trigger this rule is the word I'm looking for there so that becomes pretty powerful and the way to link this rule with a, our success lambda in CDK again is just one line it's success rule add target success lambda so now we have an event bridge sitting there we have SNS topic we have a destination, our destined lambda that has destinations configured for success and fail to go to event bridge. And now we have a rule in event bridge that if it sees this kind of payload with a source and action to trigger a success lambda, and we're only 77 lines in. <laughs> uh, the failure lambda, again, the actual function definition, that is boilerplate, but the rule the failure rule for EventBridge that's written is all based on this error type of error. So this will only trigger if it sees in the response payload error type error. If you want to start sending custom error types, again, you could have different filters. This is linked the same way the success one is. Failure rule, add target, failure lambda. Um, I don't. The next section, this is what I said at the start, I don't want to dig in too deeply into the VTL for the direct integration because most of it is boilerplate and doesn't change. The things that you might want to see, first of all, we have to define a role to allow our API gateway to publish messages to SNS, because if we didn't do that, it would, it would fail immediately and say, this is not allowed. So we create that role, and then further on down, whenever we're actually adding an endpoint onto our API gateway, we add that role. So that's the first thing. The second thing to note is that this is actually, it's an API gateway integration of type AWS. It's not a proxy integration. The proxy integrations just take whatever you send to the gateway and proxy them on through to usually a Lambda. And then whenever the Lambda sends back, it proxies it on through to the client. But in this case, because it's of type AWS, this means it needs to be in the exact format of whatever AWS service we're integrating with. And to do that, you use VTL. Now, you can see the URL for this is SNS in US East 1. Uh, that's another important point with this. If you're deploying it and you deploy it to another region, you're going to have to change that US East 1. The next part of this is that SNS works off query params. It doesn't use any other methods of integration, apparently. So that's why we have to say that the content type of this is going to be form encoded, which tells it to transform our payload into query params. And then uh, we send an action of publish. We tell it the target ARN is our topic ARN. And then we send a message of please with a space. And then we pull out a query param of mode from the URL. So that's the mode equals fail. 
that I mentioned at the start, and I pass in a version. But outside of that, the, the standard response template is to say message at the SNS topic. I don't want to dive any deeper into that because I could spend <laughs> an hour talking about VTL. But this is now deployed, so I want to show you it working. So if I take this URL, and if I just open up a new tab, go to send event, we see I get a message that says your message has been added to the SNS topic. So if I go into CloudWatch, which was previously empty, I now have my API gateway has executed, the destined lambda has executed, and the success lambda has executed. And if I jump into the success lambda, you can see that I get a pretty big JSON payload, but the message that came through is please space. And then that triggered the response to come out of that of what we saw in the Lambda source action and message, hello world. So that worked pretty much like I told you it would. And then if I wanted to fail, I add the mode equals fail flag. Again, you just see message out at the topic here. But if I go back to the CloudWatch logs, I now have a failure Lambda that has triggered. And if I jump into the logs for it, and this is the pretty cool bit, because we have the request payload, I have the message that caused it to fail. This means that you can send these events off to a dead letter queue at some kind of error hospital that you can replay them later. So you could either write a patched Lambda to process this event, or you could just say, do you know what, it's good, I can just resend this. But the point is you have everything you need to do pretty complex error recovery, just built out of destinations, out of the box. And then you can see that the response payload that comes with it is my test error that I sent. So that what we've walked through today is what the pattern is, what technology it uses, how you invoke it, and the CDK stack then deployed it and hit it and showed the logs. Hopefully this helps. If you have any more questions or any comments, you can go on to the CDK Patterns Twitter account and get me there. Okay, thanks everyone.